Congratulations on the purchase of your Calcite pH neutralizer. This video will walk you through the installation process. Your Calcite neutralizer is compatible with many of Springwell's other offerings. For example, if your well has sediment, a spin-down filter will aid in removing it. If using a spin-down filter, it will be placed ahead of the calcite neutralizer. Other solutions, such as a carbon filter, will be added after the calcite neutralizer. If you go with a water softening system, it will also follow the calcite neutralizer. And if you're using a system combo, it will also go after the calcite neutralizer. The system will consist of the following parts. The calcite tank that will ship to you empty. A neoprene jacket to place around the tank. 50 feet worth of drain line. A blue cap for the riser tube. A drain connector for the electronic head. A hose clamp. A power supply. Two MNPT fittings. A bypass valve an electronic backwash head, a large blue funnel, and three 50-pound bags of calcite. Note that the system is compatible with PVC, copper, and PEX tubing. This installation video will feature a combination of PVC and corrugated water connectors. Please note that the next steps in this video will require the pre-plumb to be tapped and be prepared. Water to the home will need to be shut off during this process. This video will feature threaded PVC connectors, but the system is also compatible with PEX and copper tubing. If you're working with threaded connectors, be sure to use plumber's tape or pipe dope. When identifying the installation area for your system, keep in mind that the system will require a drain and a power supply that's not connected to a switch. It is recommended to install a shutoff valve ahead of your system to allow for easy maintenance. It will be installed on the incoming water supply from your pre-plumb. With the pre-plumb prepped, you are now ready to prepare the tank. The riser tube that's located inside will need to be capped using the blue cap that was provided. Align it with the opening of the riser tube and then press it in place. To fill the tank with calcite, a large blue funnel is provided that will fit into the top of the tank. Since calcite produces a large amount of dust, a mask is suggested. Since the calcite bags weigh 50 pounds each, it is suggested to pour them into a smaller container and fill the tank that way. The calcite will then be poured into the tank. When filling the tank, you will only add two and a half bags. The remaining half bag will need to be stored in a dry location. With two and a half bags added, the funnel can now be removed. The blue cap that's protecting the riser tube can also be removed. You are now ready to install the electronic tank head. There is an opening on the bottom of the tank head that aligns with the riser tube inside of the tank. Begin by aligning the tank head with the riser tube. Once aligned, push down and then start rotating the tank head clockwise to seat it in place. Your goal is to fully tighten the tank head by hand. The neoprene jacket can now be placed around the tank. The bottom of the jacket has a piece of Velcro that will assist you. Once you catch the zipper, you can go ahead and slide the jacket all the way to the bottom of the tank you will need to pull the jacket together as you zip it up. Continue zipping all the way to the collar of the tank. The bypass valve will now be installed onto the electronic head. The side with the rubberized ends will be inserted onto the openings on the back of the electronic head. The fasteners will then be turned and fully tightened to secure the bypass valve in position. The two MNPT fittings will now be connected. They also have a rubberized fitting that will insert onto the connection. Push it in place and then fully tighten the fastener to secure it in place. 
Repeat these steps with the other MNPT fitting. Do note that the fittings are designed to pivot even with the fasteners fully tightened. The threaded ends of the MNPT fittings will now need to be prepped with plumber's tape. Repeat with both of the fittings. The tank can now be positioned so that the connections are facing the pre-plumb. In this example, corrugated water connectors are being used to connect to the pre-plumb. If you're working with threaded connectors, be sure that they're fully tightened. Before connecting to the tank, make note of the inlet and outlet indicators that are stamped on the tank head. The water connector leading out from the inlet will now be bent to align with the inlet on the back of the electronic tank head. The connector will then be threaded onto the inlet. And be sure that the connection is fully tightened. Another corrugated water connector will be connected to the outlet on the back of the electronic head. Be sure that that connection is also fully tightened. The fitting on the back of the tank head will allow you to pivot if necessary. That connector will then be threaded to the side of the pre-plumb that's leading into the home. Be sure that it's fully tightened. At this point, your system is successfully connected, but it's not ready to use just yet. The additional steps required to prep the tank head will require you to remove the cover. Pull forward on the lip of the tank head to release it. There is a drain located on the left-hand side of the tank head that would need to be prepped. There is a blue locking tab on the back side of the drain that needs to be removed. The threaded drain connector can then be pulled off. The drain connector with the push fitting that was shipped with the head will now have the threaded connector you removed screwed into it. Fully tighten the connections. The drain line will now be required. Take the provided hose clamp and you will slide it over one end of the drain line. The push connector of the fitting that you just assembled will be pressed over the drain line. Push it all the way in. The hose clamp will then be slid up over the connection. To keep the hose clamp from interfering with the connection, align it as shown here. Then use a flathead screwdriver to fully tighten the hose clamp. The assembled drain line will now be inserted back into the tank head. Press it in place while reinserting the blue locking tab. Thread the other end of the drain line towards the drain. Be sure to leave some slack and then trim away the excess. To secure the drain line in place, a pair of zip ties can be used. If you drill two pairs of small holes towards the top of the drain, you can insert the zip ties through them as shown here. From there, if you push the zip ties inwards, it'll create a loop. The drain line can then be inserted into that loop. The zip ties can then be secured, holding the drain line in position and ensuring that it doesn't slip out. The excess from the zip ties can then be trimmed off. You will also want to ensure that the drain line is not pinched or kinked. You are now ready to install the power supply onto the electronic head. The connection is the one listed as P that's on the far left. Here's a view of the correct connection from underneath the tank head. Go ahead and insert the barrel jack into the power connection. Plug the power supply for the tank head into an outlet that's not controlled by a switch. A 9 volt battery will serve as a battery backup to the electronic head should it lose power. There is a tray on the front of the tank head that has the connections for the battery. Once a battery is connected, it can be stored in that same tray. The cover for the tank head can now be replaced. The system is now fully connected. The next step is to test the connections for any leaks. While the water is still off to the home, open the cold water on a shower or tub. If you install the shutoff valve, turn it into the closed position. The bypass valves on the back of the electronic head will need to be set into the bypass position. 
the water to the home can now be restored. With the shutoff valve in the off position, you'll be able to test it for any leaks. If none are detected, go ahead and open the shutoff valve and continue to check for leaks. The cold water you opened will now begin flowing to the tub or shower. Work your way down through all the connections, inspecting them for any leaks. If no leaks are detected, you can turn off the bypass and allow water to begin flowing through the tank. Allow the cold water to continue to run through your system for at least 10 minutes. At this point, your system is now fully operational. The final step will require a smartphone. You will be programming the settings of the electronic head. Go to your app store and type in Legacy View. The app can then be installed. Be sure you're standing close to the tank head that's powered on. It will show up as backwashing filter. Go ahead and select it from the list. Begin by setting the time by simply tapping on that tile. A prompt will come up asking if you want to set it to the device's time. Go ahead and select OK. Next, you will want to change the regeneration time. You will want to select the time when water is not being used in the home. Go ahead and tap on that tile. In most cases, 2 a.m. is a good time to use for regeneration. But note that if your system has multiple electronic heads, you will want to stagger the regeneration times so that they don't run at the same time. After selecting the regen time, go ahead and select OK. The last setting you'll be changing is the filter backwash frequency. Go ahead and select that tile. You will change the setting from six days to seven days and then select OK. Your system has now been successfully installed and is ready to use. As the calcite in your system becomes depleted, you will need to occasionally refill it. Checking the calcite level in the tank is a manual process. Begin by removing the jacket. Use a light source, like a flashlight, to illuminate the tank. This will show you the calcite level. When the calcite level falls to or below 10 inches, it's time to add more calcite. The goal is to refill it to about 25 inches, which is about one and a half bags from the 10 inch level. Before the tank can be filled, pressure will need to be purged from the tank. Begin by shutting off the water supply. Turn on the cold water to a tub or shower and wait for the water to stop running. With the pressure relieved, you can now set the tank to bypass. Unscrew the cap by turning it counterclockwise. And note that water will exit the tank after the cap has been removed. A funnel with a large opening will now be required. Calcite can now be added to replenish the tank. Do note that water will exit the tank while it's being displaced by the calcite. Once done, go ahead and remove the funnel and replace the cap and fully tighten it in place. The neoprene jacket will then need to be replaced and zip back up. The bypass on the back of the tank head can now be opened and water to the system can now be restored. Allow water to flow through your system for 10 minutes. This concludes the installation video. Thanks for watching.